All right, welcome back everyone. Mr. Talbot here. We're going to be kind of finishing up our page of notes for today, and we're going to be doing that by looking at this idea of mercantilism, okay? So we're using the same notes we used earlier where we did the colonies, okay? and we're going to be finishing up today by looking at mercantilism. So we're going to be starting here on number two, all right? And mercantilism kind of comes from the word merchant, which is uh, merchants are people that are involved in trade. So we have trade, the, the exchange of goods between one place and another place. Okay, And it's going to involve colonies very much so. Right? So it is a theory, meaning it's not believed by everyone, but this was kind of one of the main ideas of the world during the time of colonization. So really from the very late 1400s through the to about the year oh, 1850 or so worldwide, we have this idea of mercantilism, okay? So when the United States is first being uh, colonized by these Europeans, mercantilism is the driving factor. So as we look at 2.1, our very basic definition of it is, is a theory that a nation's power depended on expanding its trade. So how strong a nation is, is going to be uh, what causes it to... Um, how strong a nation is is going to be based on how much trade it does. Okay, this goes back to that idea of the more money you have, that's going to be the more power you have. That we talked with colonies in general. Okay, it's the main cause of exploration and colonization. So while there were people, um, you know, in Portugal and Spain and Italy, wanna, that just wanted to go exploring for the sake of exploring, the people who were paying for that, you know, we think of it, Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand of Spain with Christopher Columbus. All these monarchies, the reason they're willing to risk it and make all these huge gambles, because, you know, that is a huge gamble back then, lots of money, was the idea of, well, it's an investment. It's a chance for us to make more money, which will give us more power, okay? So that's mercantilism is very much so driving it. So when these nations set up these colonies, they don't set them up. You know, we said colonies, they're not an independent place. They are operated by the so-called mother country. So... What is today the United States was largely colonized by the English. Spain has their own colonies in places like Florida and Mexico. The Dutch are going to have colonies. So there's going to be colonies kind of all over the place from all these different Europeans, and they're all there to make money. So again, these Europeans are seeing them as an economic resources, and that's number 2.3. And if you missed 2.2, that you know, it's the main cause of exploration and colonization and if we kind of zoom in here you're gonna you've looked at this chart or you will in another, one of your groups okay the idea again is it's about making money how well, how do you make money well if as the europeans you're importing fewer manufactured goods but you're exporting more of it that's better okay that basically means that you're selling more than you're buying an import would be something your country's buying exports are something they're selling so if your balance of trade is favorable, and this is something we'll even still hear talked about today, we need a more favorable trade balance. Well, that's people saying we need to be selling or exporting more stuff than we're importing. Okay? And that's the idea for mercantilism. That's one of the ways you'll make money. And it works by having, so the mother country is going to produce manufactured goods that the colonies will buy. And the colonies are going to be giving all their raw materials, we would say. So their food, lumber, fur, uh, eventually in some places we'll see oil and coal and iron. I mean, so basically the thing of natural resources, that's what the colonies are providing. They would ship it over to the mother country. The mother country would use those raw materials to make a manufactured good and then send it back to the colonies. Okay? And as a colony, you, you didn't have a choice of where you got your manufactured good from. So it was illegal in most of these colonies to manufacture your own goods because they wanted them to buy from the mother country. And you're going to usually have to buy it from the mother country or else you'd be breaking the law. All right. And finally, this is going to lead to a key idea called triangular trade, which we'll get into in a lot more detail as we look at 2.4. But triangular trade is going to be the exchange of goods between Europe, Africa, and the Americas. Okay, And the Americas are going to be providing those raw materials still. The mother countries in Europe are going to be providing the manufactured goods. And Africa is largely going to be responsible for providing the labor um, for the colonies. And that's going to come in the form of slave labor. So we'll talk about much more in the coming days. So what I would like you to do now, if you look at the bottom of your notes, there's a section for 
uh, writing a summary, a little short summary. And so take you got about two or three minutes, fill out this section of your notes here, and write a short summary. And we do this because it helps you remember it more. So that's the end of the video, guys. Make sure you write that summary, and you'll be in good shape.